Hi guys, Olive here, here today to show you the next shelf of books in my ongoing trash my bookshelves slash trash my TBR fiction unhauling project. In case you missed the first video that I made for this project, I will link that for you in the description box below and up in the cards if you want to start from the beginning and hear all of my thoughts about why I'm taking on this project. But the Reader's Digest version of what I said in that video is that I want to go through all of my fiction books my entire fiction collection that I've been building up over the years that I keep on this far bookshelf behind me. I want to go through the five shelves of fiction that I have on there. And I want to get rid of all of the books except for the ones that I'm still really excited to read and the ones that I think are still worth reading. But in order to determine which book should stay and which book should go, I am showing you all of the books on those shelves to get your opinion on them. If you've read them, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you thought. And then I'll keep the ones that I think are going to be good and all the rest I'm going to sell to my local used bookstore for credit. Taking on this project does not mean that I'm done reading fiction. I will Will still be reading fiction, reviewing fiction here on this channel. I just want to own fewer fiction books because when I was curating the collection of fiction books that I have currently that I got mainly from library book sales and used bookstores, so I'm not breaking the bank with this project. But when I started acquiring those, I was at a point in my reading life when I was reading a whole lot more fiction. But now me as a reader, I'm reading a whole lot more nonfiction. So it doesn't make sense to dedicate all of the shelf space to fiction when I'm much more of a nonfiction reader now. This project has basically been shaping itself as it goes along. I've been taking a lot of your feedback about how to best decide whether or not I want to keep some of these books. So the way that it's gone up to this point and the way that I think I'm going to continue doing it, so long as it makes sense to do this, is I'm going to show you in one video all the books from one shelf. So in today's video, it's shelf two, and there are 29 books to show you. And then I'll give you two to three weeks as long as possible to give me all of your comments, all of your feedback on the books that I've shown you in that video. I know watch later lists are very long. I don't want to assume everyone has time to watch my newest video right when it posts. I want to give you plenty of time to give me your feedback. I'll take all of that feedback into account and go through all of the books on that shelf on my own time, figure out which ones that I'm going to get rid of, which ones I definitely want to keep. And then any books that are somewhere in between where I'm still not sure if I want to keep them and opinions in the comments are conflicting. Some people love the books, some people hate them. I'll take all of those books. I think I'm going to make it a maximum of five and do a try a chapter tag where I sample a little bit, a chapter or several chapters, anything that brings me up to about 25 pages to get a real solid idea of what a book has to offer. I do that in a try a chapter tag. And then from there, I make a decision about which books are staying, which books are going from those undecideds. Since making that last try a chapter tag video in which I read a little bit from books I was still feeling unsure about from shelf one, I have not only figured out which books from shelf one I definitely want to keep, which ones I want to get rid of, but all the ones I wanted to get rid of, I actually took to my local used bookstore and sold them. So they are completely out of this house now. Shelf one is done. It feels incredible. And I'm ready to move on to shelf number two. Like I said before, there are 29 books from shelf two that I have to show you. They're piled up on the floor right in front of me, reminding me that I need to get started here. But very quickly before I do, I did just want to repeat a favor that I asked in the first video, in the first shelves video. Even if you are normally a lurker, I ask that if you have read any of the books I'm about to show, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments. When I say that I am basing a lot of my decisions off of what you all tell me about these books, I truly mean it. I really need to know what your thoughts are. I know a lot of you have been here on this channel with me for a really long time. A lot of you know my taste. In the last video, people were telling me, oh, well, I like that book, but you probably won't. That helps me so much. I am really using your opinions as data points for this project to help me along in this project because I haven't read these books and I need to know. I promise I can take it. Whatever your honest opinions are about the 
these books, I want to know down in the comments. Even if you want to go right back to lurking after leaving me a comment like that, that is totally fine with me. Of course, it would be lovely to hear from you on a more frequent basis. I'm always happy to talk with you all. But if you want to go right back to being a viewer only, that is fine. I just really need to know what you think about these books. Okay. Now that I've said that, let's actually look at the books. When I was pulling all of the books off of that second shelf to show you in this video, I could already tell that this is going to be the hardest shelf for me to purge because some of the most beautiful books I own are now on the floor in front of me. One of those is Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Now, just like every other booktuber a few years ago, I read and really enjoyed The Essex Serpent. It wasn't entirely to my taste because it was more character focused, but I could totally see what everyone loved about it. I thought it was really good. It was definitely a really beautiful book. And this one by Sarah Perry might be even more beautiful than The Essex Serpent. I like things darker and a little bit more gothic. You can probably tell that by some of my looks on this channel over the years. But I remember picking this up because it was on clearance at Barnes & Noble. And when I put it in a haul video, I remember some people in the comment section saying things like, it's not quite as good as the Essex Serpent. They had some mixed feelings about it. So I've never really known what to expect when it comes to this one. And I imagine opinions on this one are going to be a little bit divisive in the comment section. So I'm already predicting this is probably going to be one of the try a chapter ones. Now, this next one I got at a library book sale, and this is actually another one that I remember someone saying in the comments when I hauled it that they had some mixed feelings about it. Why do I remember these things? Anyway, this is Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller. This is a book of the month book. I remember at that specific season's library book sale, there was like a whole table of old book of the month books. I'm assuming a member or a former member had just gotten rid of all of their old copies. But I decided because I had heard a lot about it, I would pick it up at that point, not knowing that that one person or maybe several people had mixed feelings about it. From what I remember, this is about a woman who starts writing letters to her husband and hiding them in books around the house. And then she writes the final one and disappears, leaving her husband and her children behind. Years later, her children want to figure out what happened to her. And they don't realize that a lot of the answers to their questions are hidden in the books around the house. Now that I'm recounting that, I'm definitely still interested in this story. But... I'm wondering if I should go back and hunt down that one comment, or you can let me know what you thought of this book. I'm not sure if this is worth my time, but I'm definitely still interested. Now, this one is definitely a used copy. I can tell just from looking at it. I don't think I got it at a library book sale. I don't remember where I got this, but I know why I picked it up. It's Almost Famous Women by Megan Mayhew Bergman. This is a collection of short stories all about women who narrowly missed fame. So they were almost famous or they were related to someone famous, but were never actually famous themselves. And when I first started getting back into reading and discovered the bookish internet, this book was being highly discussed at the time. I believe it was 2014 or 2015, but I remember hearing a lot about this book. I think it was on the Book Riot podcast and all the different websites that I was frequenting at the time. So that's definitely why I picked this up when I found a used copy of it somewhere. But since that moment has passed, I am not sure how much more of an interest I have in reading this one, nor have I heard anything about it since its brief moment in the spotlight way back when. So not sure about this one. Okay, this next one is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmid. This is another one that was very popular on BookTube a few years ago, although this one is a lot more current than Almost Famous Women. I think this one was nominated for the Women's Prize a few years ago, if I'm remembering correctly. This is a novelization of the murders perpetrated by Lizzie Borden in the late 19th century, very famous murder trial. And I'm not not interested in this one. I still could see myself reading it. I just can't envision when I would feel compelled to pick this up. Like I can't imagine looking at my bookshelves and being like, oh yeah, that one. I'm just, 
I'm not opposed to books about true crime or novelizations about true crime. It's just never my first choice. So while this book does get extra credits because there's a pigeon on the cover, I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of sense to have a physical copy in my collection. I got it remaindered. I do remember that. So it's not like I'm giving up a bunch of money by getting rid of it. But I think this might be one that's better read from the library, but let me know what you think. All right, this is the first one off of this shelf that I feel pretty confident I'm going to want to keep. This is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. This is another one I remember hearing a ton about on BookTube, but I don't think I've heard anything about it since. I think it's about a woman in her 80s. We're in the 1980s and she's walking home from a party and she takes like a 10 mile walk around New York City. And I think she also previously worked in advertising in the 1930s, which New York in the 1930s, if there are any kind of flashback scenes to that, if she's remembering that time in her life, New York in the 1930s is rules of civility territory. And I already know I like that. And the blurbs seem really good. Daniel Handler says, easily the best gadding around town novel since Don Powell and Dorothy Parker. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping this one. Okay, this next one. As much as it saddens me to say this because this book is gorgeous, I don't know if I want to keep this one. It's The Bastard of Istanbul by Alif Shafak. And the reason why I say I'm considering getting rid of this is that I read one of her previous books, The Architect's Apprentice, and I didn't really like it. I didn't dislike it. I didn't hate it. It didn't make me angry. I just remember being very disappointed by it. So ever since then, I've been a little bit reticent to pick up any of her other books. I don't want to feel that same feeling of disappointment. But if this one is better than The Architect's Apprentice, please do let me know. I can be convinced to keep this one around. Okay, this next one. I've been dreading talking about this book. I will even be honest and say I considered pulling it off of that shelf and not talking about it at all because I feel so ashamed, but I feel like it's important to be honest. So I will say that I am ashamed that I have not yet read The Great Glass Sea by Josh Weil. And the reason why I feel so ashamed is that I won this beautiful finished copy. It's not even an arc. It's a beautiful finished copy. I won this in a Goodreads giveaway and I still haven't read it. There is a reason why I've stopped putting my name in to the running for those types of giveaways, because I am so horrible about getting to the books that I win. I very rarely do. I always have every intention to, but then other books take priority and I never get to them. So it's not fair for me to put my name in the running if I'm not actually going to prioritize the book. That's the reason they hold those giveaways. So it's pretty wrong of me to continue entering if I know now that I have this tendency to put them off forever. I have given this one a try. I will say that on a couple of different occasions, I would get a little ways into it and then just lose interest. And I don't know why that was the case. I completely forget why I put this down. Maybe it was just because I was distracted by other books. But for all intents and purposes, I should be chomping at the bit to read this book. It follows twin boys. It has to do with Russian folklore. It's gorgeous. There is no reason that I shouldn't have read this book by now. So I don't know that I could get rid of this one still unread. I think I need to finally read this one, bite the bullet and just read it so I can finally fulfill my side of the bargain years later. Now this next one, I've been meaning to read this one for a very long time as well. This is Till the Well Runs Dry by Lauren Francis Sharma. This was one of the books I brought along on vacation to Mexico. What was it, five years ago now? Time goes so fast. But I know I brought Sorcery and Cecilia or The Enchanted Chocolate Pot. I read that one. I think I read most of Where'd You Go, Bernadette, and I read Like Water for Chocolate, which was incredible. And it was the perfect place to read it since it's set in Mexico. I think this was the only one that I didn't quite get to on that trip. And I regret that because I definitely think I'm going to be interested in this one. I know it's set in Trinidad. It follows a 16-year-old seamstress. I think she's raising some young children, even at her young age. And she's also guarding a family secrets. 
I definitely still want to read this one. I don't know why, but this second shelf has so many books on it that I started at one point and then got distracted and just never came back to. One of those is Five Star Billionaire by Tosh Aw. I know I picked this up. I know I bought it in the first place and then picked it up originally right after I finished The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer. I was looking to read something else that had a similar group dynamic because I love The Interesting so much. I wanted something similar. This book takes place in Shanghai and it follows five different newcomers to the city and the ways that their lives interconnect. Unless there's some sort of a consensus in the comments that this one isn't worth coming back to, I think I'm going to keep this one. This next one I remember getting at a library book sale, but I just had to look at the inside cover to remind myself what this one is about because I have no memory of what this book is about. This is called A Map of Home by Rhonda Girard. This is about the rebellious daughter of a Greek Egyptian mother and a Palestinian father. She grows up in Kuwait, but her family flees to Egypt after the Iraqi invasion in the 1990s. And then it seems like eventually they land in Texas. It sounds intriguing. I can see why I picked it up in the first place, but this one is definitely still a question mark. Now next, there's A Guide for the Perplexed by Dara Horn. I have been really curious about Dara Horn's novels ever since I saw them at a Barnes and Noble. It must have been in 2015. I remember very distinctly being in there with my husband, going into the fiction section, looking at her books and thinking, wow, these all sound fantastic. I think I added them all to Goodreads. I think this is the only one that I actually own, but I've always been interested in all of her fiction. I know this one has a split timeline and it's set in Egypt. Dara Horn, I know, has an essay collection coming out later this year called People Love Dead Jews. I know for certain that I want to read that, but I am still curious about her fiction. So if you've read any of her novels, please do let me know your thoughts. As of right now, this one is a maybe. Now, this next book in the pile, I don't have any memory of buying this book. I'm not seeing any indication of where this is from. So I suppose it's a candidate for unhauling since... I don't have any fun stories behind its acquisition. I don't have any kind of an emotional connection to it whatsoever. It's called The Wishmaker by Ali Sethi. This is about a young boy in Pakistan. He is fatherless, so he's being raised by the women in his family. Has anyone read this? What did you think of it? This next one I do remember acquiring. I got it on clearance at Barnes & Noble. Why I remember that, I don't know. <laughs> but it's called The Invention of Exile by Vanessa Monko. This book is about a Russian immigrant living in Connecticut in 1913 with his family, but he's falsely accused of anarchist activities, attending anarchist meetings. So he and his family are deported back to Russia. I don't think they're actually Russian. I think he's deported and they go with him. But then they flee to Mexico to avoid the civil war that's going on after the revolution. Then his family, his wife and children are able to return to the United States, but he himself can't join them because of his record, even though it's not true. He's not able to come back to the States. And I think this book details his activities of trying to join them back home. This one is another maybe. Next up, there's When the Doves Disappeared by Sophie Oksanen. This one I remember hearing a little bit about when it was first released, but not much since then. This is World War II fiction. I normally don't like World War II fiction. I know a lot of people do. I'm not poo-pooing it, I think, to each his own. I know a lot of people like World War II. I know it's a lot of people's favorite subject matter to read about, including my mother. She loves World War II books. It's just personally not my thing. But the reason why I picked this one up is that it's set in Estonia. And I am super interested in the Baltic states. I studied a lot about them when I was in college. And I've not encountered a lot of novels set in Latvia, Lithuania, or Estonia, the Baltic states. So that's definitely why I picked this one up. But it's another one kind of like see what I have done that in concept, I think I would like this book, but I can't actually imagine myself pulling this off the shelf and sitting down to read it. So please let me know what you think if you've read it. Now, remember when I said earlier that this shelf would be really, really hard to purge because the books are all so beautiful? Well, this next one, I think, might be one of the most beautiful books that I own. It's called Bellwether by Dennis Mahoney. 
I mean, look at that. This book's premise actually reminds me a lot of Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, which is actually a very good thing. I loved that book. I reviewed it on this channel around when it came out. This book is about a young man who rescues a young woman from a river, and it turns out she has a lot of secrets. That sounds really good. And I'm hoping that the consensus about this book is really good because I would really like to keep this. I mean, who willingly lets a book that looks like this go? There's even this little hummingbird bat-like creature in the middle. Was this book made for me? Oh, this next one. It's another beautiful one, but it's also another one that I have had a complicated history with. It's called Smoke by Dan Valletta. Now, this book is set in an alternative version of Victorian England in which people emit smoke from their bodies when they lie. That's a very intriguing premise. I was definitely intrigued when this book first came out. It is why I put a hold on it at the library. I think I was the first person to get my hands on that library copy. I read 20 pages of it and then had to return it because it was a new release. I think I only got maybe two weeks with it. It wasn't enough time for me to finish. So to be completely honest with you, I was not that impressed by those first 20 pages. And so I really had no business buying this $1 library book sale copy when I saw it at a library book sale. I picked it up mainly because this book is so, so beautiful. And I wanted to believe that it got better. But I have heard from a number of people <laughs> over the years that it doesn't really get better, that this isn't all that great of a book. And I've kept it mainly because it's beautiful. And that's not a good reason to keep a book around. So unless there is a consensus in the comments that says this is worth reading, I will probably be getting rid of this one. Oh, I didn't even realize this next one was on this shelf. It's I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. This one is 100% staying. It's a classic that I've been meaning to read for a long time. It was actually included in my Late to the Party books video that I made a while back all the books that I feel like everyone else has already read, and I am very, very late to the party. This is definitely one of those books, so I'm hoping to read this in a timely fashion. This next book I know is another maybe, but I will be really interested to hear your thoughts on it. It's called Too Bright to Hear, Too Loud to See by Julie Ann Gary. The main character of this book is a Hollywood studio executive who suffers from bipolar disorder, but no one knows that about him. He leaves his wife and daughter behind for a decade to go travel the world. And that's when his bipolar disorder really starts to come to the forefront. And from what I read inside of the dust jacket on this one, it seems like this entire story is told over the time it takes for him to get a series of electroshock treatments. So it's kind of like everything about his past is rushing back to him during that time. Again, this sounds intriguing, but I'm not sure if it's actually worth reading. So if you've read it, please let me know what you thought. I'm probably going to end up keeping This Burns My Heart by Samuel Park not just because this book is gorgeous and I want to keep it around, but also because this is a love story set in post-war South Korea. And something I've definitely discovered about myself over the past two to three years is that I love learning more about Korea. I don't know what it is about Korea, just like I don't know what it is about Russia that intrigues me so much. But I've read so many different books set in Korea, written by Korean people, and I just can't get enough. So I do think I want to read this one. This next one I'm fairly certain I'm going to keep as well. It's called The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Gassara. This book is set in the 1980s in New York City, just like Lillian Boxfish takes a walk, except this one focuses on the Harlem ball scene within drag culture. I actually have a nonfiction book all about drag culture. So this book and that book might make a good fiction nonfiction pairing now that I think about it. I'm not sure about this next one. I've had it for a really long time. It's called The Bestiary by Nicholas Christopher. This book is all about a man who becomes obsessed with finding a medieval text that reportedly tells true stories about mythical creatures that were not granted access to Noah's Ark. And so they perished and no longer exist. This one's probably going. I don't think I want to read this. I just recently hauled At Hawthorne Time by Melissa Harrison, and I still very much want to read it. So this one stays. I know I didn't go into detail in any kind of a video anyway about which books I decided to get rid of off of the previous shelf. However, I did post a picture 
of all of the books I ended up selling to the used bookstore on my Instagram. I think actually, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm going to post all of the pictures of the books I'm getting rid of over there as opposed to talking about them in another video. I think that would take up too much time for you to see books that you've already seen. So I'll put that on Instagram. But if you go and look at that picture on Instagram, you'll be able to see that I actually ended up getting rid of, I think, all of the campus novels that were on that previous shelf. As much as I love campus novels, those books just didn't seem worth keeping around. And I'm also considering getting rid of this next one, another campus novel called Gossip of the Starlings by Nina de Gramont. This one is, of course, set at a girls boarding school, and I have no idea if it's worth reading. So please let me know. This next book, it says on the cover, it was a finalist for the Man Booker International Prize. I know it was translated into English from Portuguese. It's called Confession of the Lioness by Mia Kuto. This book takes place in an isolated village in Mozambique, and there are these ghost-like lionesses who are hunting and killing the women of the village for no discernible reason. I have never heard anything about this book before, so I have no idea if it's good. It is very, very short. So maybe, again, it's a maybe. This next one is a more recent acquisition. It's called Happily and Madly by Alexis Bass. I know this one is a YA thriller, and it's about this young woman who's been told two different things about her destiny, that she's going to fall happily and madly in love, but also that she could be dead before she turns 18. I got this one as a gift for my husband. I had put it on one of my wish lists. I forget which one. I keep several of them around the internet. I keep them to myself. I'm not looking for anyone to buy me anything. But I put this on a wish list just for the people in my family. And I think he bought it for me for my birthday, maybe Christmas. And I know I put it aside to read during the summer. So this is actually the time of year I would want to read this. Unless I get comments saying this book is absolutely trash, I think I'm going to keep this, especially because it was a gift. This next one, I don't think I want to keep this. Although apparently, according to the cover, it was long listed for the Bailey's Prize. I do not remember hearing about that. It's called The Dogs of Littlefield by Suzanne Byrne. This is a suburban drama, and it's about how someone is poisoning the dogs of this Massachusetts town. I don't know. That sounds kind of upsetting. I own a cat. I would consider myself more of a cat person, but I do also love dogs. So I don't imagine that that'll be fun reading about someone poisoning innocent animals. But as much as I don't know why I originally picked this book up, I know why I've kept it around. And that's the fact that when I see this book on my shelf, I think to myself, ooh, if I read that and if I wanted to review it, I have the perfect shirt to wear in that review. I have a shirt with dogs on it. That's a bad reason to keep a book around. That's just about as bad of a reason to keep a book on my shelf as it is to keep Smoke by Dan Valletta on my shelves just because I think it's so beautiful. I don't think I'm actually going to read this. So unless there is someone out there with wonderful things to say about this book, I think this is going to go. This next one, same thing. I feel like I'm primarily keeping it around because I have the perfect outfit to wear should I want to give it a standalone review. But this one, I actually do have more confidence that I would actually like the book itself. It's called The Toss of a Lemon by Padma Viswanathan. This book is set in India, and the main character is a young widow who defies custom by moving in and living in her dead husband's house. And a closeted gay man, her servant, acts as her public face. This one sounds really, really interesting. It is a little bit on the longer side, and I don't always love long novels, but I'm leaning toward keeping this one. The penultimate book on shelf number two is called The Bedlam Stacks by Natasha Pulley. This is by the author of The Watchmaker of Filigree Street, which I know is a favorite of Katie from Books and Things. This is an adventure story. It takes place in the Amazon. I definitely want to read this one. I do think I'm going to wait to read it until after I've already read The Watchmaker of Filigree Street though. And then the final book on shelf number two is called The Kingdom Beyond the Waves by Stephen Hunt. This book is all about a professor who goes on an expedition to find the lost city of a utopian society. Now, as I was saying in the first video I did in this project where I showed all the books on shelf number one, I'm not much of a fantasy reader, and this is obviously a fantasy book. 
And I kind of came to the conclusion that I don't think I want to have many, if any, fantasy books on my shelves, because I don't reach for them very often. And when I find myself craving one, I can just very easily get one out from the library. So I'm leaning toward getting rid of this one. But of course, if this book is sensational, please do let me know and I may rethink all of that. Who knows? So those are all the books on the second shelf out of the total five that I'm going to be covering in this project. Again, if you have thoughts on any of these books, large or small, if you want to write me just a quick note or a whole book's worth of information down in the comments, please feel free to do that. I want to know as much as possible as I'm making decisions about these books. Some of them I am more sure about. Other ones, I definitely need some help figuring out whether or not I want to keep them. And if you have information, I want to hear it. Any or all of that can go down in the comment section below. But if you have any more general comments or questions, you can also put them in the comment section. Also, if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading or writing about right now, you can find me on a variety of different places across the internet. The links to everywhere you can find me, including my social media profiles, will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.